All right, so today I'm in Leadville, Colorado, and I apologize for looking like a giant, but I forgot to bring a tripod because uh, I wasn't really planning on making this video, but it um, it's a good location to talk about two things, really, supplemental oxygen and leaning. Uh, we'll start with supplemental oxygen because um, I know those of you who have watched my channel for a while have probably seen me fly around with a, um, a hose in my nose whenever I'm flying around the mountains. For those who don't know why we do this, um, oxygen falls off as you gain altitude. So um, it's not necessarily the fact that oxygen falls off, but, but air is less dense. Air is comprised of primarily nitrogen, but nitrogen, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and a number of other um, elements. And as you gain altitude, the pressure is less, and therefore there's less air. So um, picture a pyramid of people where you've got, you know, five people on the bottom, then four people on top of them, and then three people on top of them, two, and then finally you've got the one person on top. That's essentially what the atmosphere and gravity does to air pressure. So the lower you are, the closer you are to sea level, the more air pressure you are, uh, you have. The higher you go in, in, in elevation, the less air pressure there is and therefore the less air in general. That's one of the reasons airplanes fly high is because they're, mu they're much more efficient up at altitude. There's less air to act as, uh, as resistance. So that's great for airplanes, poor for humans who need oxygen to survive. So we do, uh, there's two primary methods, I'll, I'll put it that way, for um, compensating for the lack of air at altitude. What you're probably most familiar with if you fly commercial aviation is pressurization. Um, pressurization essentially uh, puts you inside a giant tube. The fuselage of the airplane is a, uh, is a vessel just as if you were sitting in the cylinder of an air compressor and they pump pressure into that vessel to make it seem like you're lower than, uh, than you actually are. This is great. Uh, for commercial aviation. It's revolutionized comfort and safety and, and all of those things. For us poor folks in general aviation, it's prohibitively expensive. Um, for me to have a pressurized aircraft, um, it, I, I'm looking at 10 times the cost of, of my Mooney, essentially, um, just to get started. And then annuals and maintenance and, and all that is, is much, much higher. So we can get around that by um, going the other route. So we, we talked about the fact that air is relatively the same, um, you know, ratios is just less of it as you gain altitude. So what if we increase the ratio? That's what we do with supplemental oxygen. So rather than me breathing 20% oxygen, I'm breathing 80% oxygen, um, but I'm breathing less air in. So there's charts, and I'll put some up maybe here, um, where uh, you can see how to adjust regulators um, and increase your flow of oxygen as you gain altitude. Mine is, is very easy to adjust. I have a, a regulator that I just adjust the flow rate in liters per minute based upon the altitude that I'm flying. So oxygen is one of the factors um, that we need to consider when flying at altitude. I've mentioned in some of my other videos that there are physiological effects on, on us as, as pilots. Um, there's also uh, performance uh, degradation on the, on the airplane itself. So um, the air being thinner and less of it uh, is great for fuel economy and efficiency, but it's terrible for lift. Um, and performance. Engines like I, I have in the Mooney are calibrated for, um, for sea level. So when you throw the, the fuel air mixture lever the, um, all the way forward, that's really the ratio that it should be plus a little bit of extra fuel for takeoff at sea level. When we gain altitude um, or when we take off from a high altitude airport like, uh, like Leadville, almost at 10,000 feet, we need to reduce the amount of fuel that we're putting into our engine because there's less air. So there's an optimal range or an optimal mixture, I should say, of fuel and air um, to combine for combustion. As there's less air, you have to reduce the amount of fuel, which in turn 
uh, reduces the amount of power of, of uh, power output of the engine. So that's why we have the, the engine performance decrease as we, uh, as we gain altitude. If I were to leave the mixture um, all the way in, I would have a, a, a fuel to air mixture that's too rich. So there'd be too much fuel to too little air. And um, that's an inefficient way to burn. You're burning too much fuel, and it's actually not the way to generate the most power. You want that, that perfect balance of fuel and air, um, so we, we do that by leaning. As you may have seen in some of my other videos, I tend to leave my mixture a little bit rich uh, for my climbs, and I've gotten a lot of flack for that. Air not only is used for combustion, uh, but in a uh, bird like um, pretty much most general aviation planes um, these days, they're air cooled. So we also rely on that air to cool our engine. I'm conservative. Um, I really don't want to run my engine over 400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for my cylinder head temps. So that's why you've seen me maybe run a little bit richer than I should. It's a balancing act um, between the power output of the engine and the um, and the cooling properties of the engine. So uh, that's sort of what I juggle on my climb outs. Once I get up to altitude and I accelerate, I'm able to lean way, way back to, you know, sometimes seven gallons an hour, which is absolutely nothing when you're doing 140 to 50 knots. So um, that's uh, how I lean a naturally aspirated engine. I want to touch briefly on the fact that there are um, many schools of thought to engine management and engine leaning, and there are many different reasons why you follow um, different protocols. So, so I have one of the simplest engines uh, imaginable. I have a carbureted, uh, naturally aspirated engine. When you get to a turbocharged engine uh, and fuel injection and things of that nature, you can change your properties a little bit. So uh, for me, I'll never have uh, perfectly equal distribution of fuel and air in my cylinders. It's just the nature of the beast having a carbureted engine. We'll get close um, and there's some tricks I can do to kind of even out the fuel air mixture uh, that I'll talk about maybe in another video, but um, I can't really have precise distribution of fuel. So I may have one cylinder that's running much hotter than another one, so I have to treat that one, the hottest cylinder that I have, as sort of um, how I'm going to manage the engine as a, as a whole. So that becomes the lowest common denominator for, um, for my engine management. So if one cylinder is reading 410, I'm going to richen up my fuel mixture even if my other cylinders maybe are at 380. So um, not a perfect uh, way to manage an engine, but it's what I have to do. Um, and that's the, the price we pay from a performance uh, perspective for being able to fly an airplane that's maybe a little bit more cost effective for, for me, the owner operator. Uh, when you move sort of the next step to a fuel injected engine, you have more precise fuel delivery. You can get GAMI injectors, you can get them tuned so that your fuel air mixture is perfectly tuned and even across your cylinders. Um, when you have a fuel injected engine, you can typically run it on the lean of peak side. So you have a power curve for, for an engine management. As I sort of mentioned, right in the middle, let's say, is uh, the perfect fuel to air mixture for the most power output. Um, that's also gonna generate the most heat. So um, we wanna run it either rich of peak or lean of peak um, by a, a number of degrees, and it depends on the model of airplane, uh, model of engine you have, number of cylinders, all kinds of things. But um, in my Mooney, I typically run 75 degrees rich of peak for my best power. Um, in, a, uh, in another engine, you sometimes run 50 degrees lean of peak for best fuel economy. So there's, um, there's all kinds of ways and, and all kinds of, I, I, I can't get into the details in a short video like this. Um, just, uh, so, you know, I want everyone to understand that there are many methods and many reasons for, for why people run engines the way they do. Uh, so we talked about carbureted engines, fuel injected engines. Sort of the next step is fuel injected, turbocharged or turbo normalized engines. Uh, what a turbocharger can do, similar to a pressurized cabin, 
is it pressurizes the engine. So the difference between turbo normalized and turbocharged, uh, you may have heard that. Turbo normalized uh, essentially maintains the sea level pressure in the engine. So if your sea level pressure was um, 30 some inches of, of mercury, uh, it's going to maintain that sea level pressure as you climb to your critical altitude. It depends on what kind of turbo normalizer you have, but that may fall off at 15,000 feet, 18,000 feet, uh, somewhere, somewhere thereabouts. Uh, Turbocharged uh, is exactly sort of as it sounds. It's actually producing more power than the engine did at sea level. So uh, a turbocharged engine produces, uh, you know, uh, somewhere in the in the range of um, 35 plus inches of, of mercury as it's uh, you know as it's generating power. So that's the the brief uh, intro to turbo normalized, turbocharged. Uh, the, the main difference being you leave the mixture all the way in um, and, and you do so for takeoff and while you climb because it's pumping more and more air into that engine as you climb and um, therefore the, the fuel air ratio remains the same. So I've got a piper coming in here that's going to make some noise. So I'm going to wrap the video up here uh, now and um, I hope all right, I'm back home and uh, I apologize for the change of scene but the, as the piper was coming in I didn't have a chance to sort of round out the video like I like I wanted to um, in closing I'm gonna kind of contradict what I um, what the the intent of the entire video was about um, and uh, and tell you that um, despite what you may have learned in your private pilot um, engine leaning isn't the end-all be-all um, for for performance in the mountains um, in my opinion, it gets too much attention um, and, and can distract people from uh, what they really need to focus on, which is flying the airplane. Uh, I've, I've heard too many stories of people focusing on trying to get that engine um, you know, perfectly leaned out that they forgot to retract their flaps or the landing gear or, or they, they weren't flying the airplane um, at VX or VY. Um, first and foremost, uh, if, if first and foremost fly the airplane, if you were to leave the, the mixture all the way rich um, versus perfectly leaned, you'd probably see about a 10% difference in your performance. So if you're climbing 500 feet a minute and you perfectly lean that engine, you're gonna gain an extra 50 feet a minute. If you're doing 1,000 feet a minute, you'll gain 100. Um, in the grand scheme of things, that's not a huge difference um, as, as maybe forgetting to retract the landing gear or put your flaps up or something like that. Um, the biggest way you can impact your, your performance in the mountains is, um, is by leaving weight behind. Um, my channel is called Man and a Mooney. I typically am flying in the mountains just myself, the airplane, and, uh, and possibly half tanks. So I leave as much weight behind as I can to increase my performance in the mountains. The other thing that's going to increase your performance um, drastically is, as I mentioned, flying the airplane appropriately, but also having the appropriate mountain flying knowledge. Knowing where the updrafts and downdrafts are, reading those, and using those to your advantage, um, specifically the updrafts. I can increase my performance 500%, um, five times, uh, no joke, um, by flying updrafts. You know, I could maybe climb 500 feet a minute, I get in an updraft and I'm doing 2,500 feet a minute. Um, so proper mountain flying instruction, is there, there's no substitute. Um, and I would focus on flying the airplane rather than paying attention to whether or not you've perfectly leaned the engine. Um, I tend to run my engine more rich than I should on my climb out. And it really doesn't detract a huge amount from my overall um, aircraft performance. I'd rather have my engine run cool than gain that extra 50 to 100 feet a minute in my climb. So um, these are my personal recommendations. These are things that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm speaking to you from my personal experience. And, uh, and I don't mean to contradict anything you've learned, um, but uh, you know, it, it's, it's just what I've experienced flying my Mooney in the mountains. The one caveat I will mention is uh, speaking of my Mooney, my Mooney is a slippery airframe 
with a constant speed propeller. So a constant speed propeller is effectively a transmission for an airplane. If you're flying an airplane that's perhaps a little dirtier and uh, you know you got the gear down, a boxier airframe, and a fixed pitch prop propeller, you may have a little bit more mileage with uh, with engine leaning than you would in in the Mooney. So um, you know always lean to max RPM in a uh, in a fixed pitch propeller airplane. Um, so that said, I didn't mean to contradict anything that, that I had said previously in the video. I just wanted to, um, you know, on the flight home, I was thinking that uh, I didn't quite have time to, to wrap this video up in the way that I wanted. So um, I hope these videos are helpful. I'm going to keep trying to put them out as I have time with, uh, with work, a newborn, and, uh, and all the other responsibilities in my life. I'm having less and less uh, time these days. But I appreciate everyone's comments. I try to read every single one of them. And, uh, and I'll try to keep more of these coming um, in the future. So thanks everyone for your uh, encouragement and support. And in the meantime, fly safe. Thanks.